Celebrity MasterChef, we've got ourselves 20 celebrities who want to show us how good they are in the kitchen. I'm relaxed at the moment. I'm sure that's all going to change. Many of them can sing, dance, act. We don't care about that. What we care about is whether they can cook. I am the boss in the kitchen. I get a bit kind of precious about my cooking. Who's not going to just be a flash in a pan? Light the oven, set the stove, sharpen your knives, let's go. These five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best cooks will make it through. I'm a scouser, so I can always think of my feet in any given situation. I'm taking MasterChef very seriously. I think people are going to see a very different side to me. I'm going to have a good time and hopefully I can feed them with some of my magic. I am really competitive. If I let my competitive nature take over, then I could end up in serious trouble. Cooking is not my speciality. I'm a trier. I will give it a go. Welcome to this, the MasterChef kitchen. You're here, hopefully, because you like to cook. All we would like right now is a plate of food that we don't mind tasting. Your first test is a good old fashioned MasterChef mystery box invention test. One plate of food and you'll have just one hour to do it in. So ladies and gentlemen, reveal your ingredients. Looks good. Today's mystery box is inspired by American diner food. It includes chicken wings, beef steak, bacon, corn on the cob, cheese, avocado, blueberries, and marshmallows. One hour, one plate of food. Don't poison us. Let's go. Swimmer Liz Johnson has won a medal at three consecutive Paralympic Games, including taking home gold in Beijing 2008. Obviously, being a swimmer, I've always cooked lots of food, but it's been to fill me up. I don't mind eating my own food, but I'm not sure anybody else would want to eat it. Liz, you seem like you're doing OK. Yeah, I, I struggled initially, but I've thought I'd stick to what I know, so I'm hoping to go for some kind of chicken wings with, like, a paprika and creamy sauce. If my sweet potatoes come good, I'm going to take out the filling, mix it with cheese, put it back in. But it might not work. <laughs> Listen, I like your ideas. OK. You seem quite comfortable. Mm, yeah, until you start shouting 10 minutes to go, and then I'm going to panic. <laughs> This is an athlete and used to being under pressure, and you can see it, she's properly in control. Paprika spice chicken wings, lovely. The additional cream, I'm a bit dubious about that. TV personality Amy Childs found fame on The Only Way is Essex. I've gone totally blank. And has only started cooking in the last few years. So I had a date once. He came to my house, I cooked him a nice dinner. It was terrible, like, literally, I burnt everything. But that's going to change. I'm going to be practising every day and cooking every day. Amy, you look ridiculously nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm not the best cook. I'm not that kind of person that sees things and can put two and two together. But I just feel, like, really under pressure at the minute, and I don't know why. Amy. Take a breath. I've got to put my I can't even cook, like, cut properly. I think you're under pressure because 
there's not the stuff here to make what you normally make. Exactly. If you came home and hungry and you had to cook from what was in the cupboard... Prosecco. That's what I'd like. Amy has successfully peeled a sweet potato, chopped it up and put it in the oven. What's going to happen after that? I'm not quite sure. But I feel I'm going to pass out because I just cannot know what I'm doing. Amy just needs to calm down a bit. What would I do, sticky chicken? How do I do sticky chicken? She can't see the wood for the trees. OK, let's just chicken, just do a few tomatoes for the plate. Journalist and newsreader Louise Minchin... Yeah, it's going to do, isn't it? Oh! ..present BBC Breakfast. She has two daughters and is married to a keen cook. I normally cook for my family, but sometimes we do have people around. They assume, if it's really delicious, because I'm not the chef in the house, that my husband has cooked it. And I'm like, hold on a second, actually, I cooked that. How do you feel? Under pressure, I'm doing what I always do in the kitchen, which is probably be a little bit messy, as you can see, possibly a little bit overambitious. What are you making for us? Well, you said American diner, didn't you? So I've kind of taken on what I imagine American diners to be and what I would order in American diner, which is a hamburger. Yes! You like hamburger? Yes, um, I'm, I'm really disappointed we've only got one. Also, on that side, we're going to have corn on the cob. And also, fingers crossed, you're going to have some chicken wings in uh, maple syrup soy sauce. Are you going to win MasterChef? No. <laughs> if I get through this round, I'll be really chuffed. Louise has got off to a flying start. She's going to make a burger. Fantastic. Who doesn't like a decent burger? Let's just hope it is a decent burger. You've got just 20 minutes left, guys. Actor Tina Malone is best known for her role in TV drama Shameless and grew up in a large family in Liverpool. Well, I'm an Irish Catholic from a family predominantly of women. We always cooked. You always had a pan of scouse on. You were always clean, my nan used to say, and you always fed people. Tina, do you do a fair bit of cooking? Yeah. Who do you cook for? At Christmas 18, I cook for my husband, my daughters. My, I've got a two-year-old and a 35-year-old and uh, about to be a granny soon. And I cook for my mother and my sisters and my aunties, out of us. You've got a 35-year-old child and a two-year-old child? Yeah, pregnant at 17 and pregnant at 50. What are you making for us now? Beef in maybe a tomato-y type stroganoff-y sauce. Served with what? Veg and a bit of pasta. What we do have from Tina is a pan full of garlic. What she's going to do with that garlic, I'm not quite sure. I say adventurous. Greg and John will probably say mad. But the good thing is, it's going to keep Dracula away for the day. Ex EastEnders star Sid Owen. What else do I want to make? Lives for half the year in the southwest of France and has written his own cookbook. I can sort of, you know, sort of rustle things together quite easily. But, you know, this is a uh, difference, MasterChef. And, uh, you know, let's hope the, uh, the pressures don't get to me. How good are you, Sid? I'm all right. I'm, you know, my presentation is not much to uh, talk about. What are you making right now? Keep it, obviously, American-themed. With a little bit of beef. I've got chicken wings. But you don't know how it's going to look on a plate? I don't know, but it would taste good. I can assure you that. Sid's making us a mixture of many, many things. But right now, he doesn't know how his dish is going to come together. Bung it all on a plate and hope they like it. Last five minutes. Looking at everyone's thinking they've done so well, but the thing is, though, I cook basic food. I, can't, I don't cook fancy food. I've got quite a few problems, but presentation is a, is a thing for me. 90 seconds left, guys. That's all you got. I'm happy with the taste, but, you know, I'm not the expert, am I? Last touches, last touches. That's it, stop! 
Stop. Oh, dear. I only cut my thumb once. What's that? And it was my good hand. I wasn't even... <laughs> Did you? Oh. First up is actor Tina. She's made beef, tomato and garlic stew with a creamy cheese pasta. I can't eat that much garlic in my mouth. Sorry, I can. <laughs> can you? Yeah. What? You think you've got a lot of garlic? Look in there. Oh, my word. Oh, yeah. Look at it. That, in most people's opinion, would be far too much garlic. Yeah. However, the pasta is nice. And it's really cheesy and it's really tangy. And your beef's really soft and it's fruity with tomatoes and it's nicely seasoned. You just have one simple idea, not two, and cut down on the garlic. OK. Yeah, I think your food's tasty. I think what you've got to do now is just do a little bit less is more. <sighs> I'm not really happy about what I did today. If I had to go back and do it again, I would do it differently. Maybe do one dish instead of two. Amy has served chicken wings roasted in chilli and soy with sweet potato wedges and a Van Dyke cut tomato. What you've got are some tasty chicken wings with some sweet potato. And it's, it's tasty. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not a disaster. But the fact is it probably just needs a sauce or something like that to make it a bit more special. I think you've got some decent ideas. I think what you've got to combat now aren't cookery skills, it's your nerves. It wasn't the best dish, of course it wasn't, but he said they said it tasted good, so I feel quite better that they've said that. Swimmer Liz has made chicken wings with bourbon, maple syrup, paprika and sour cream sauce, sweet potato stuffed with cheese and a side of red onion. Your chicken wings could do with a bit more cooking. Your sauce is really unusual because it tastes of paprika, sweet maple syrup, and in a weird way, it's probably something quite weird I'd expect to find in an American diner. The sweet potatoes with the cheese are OK, need a lot more seasoning. OK. I really like the sauce you made. Really sweet, with heat as well. I think you've got some nice ideas. Your touch is letting you down here a little bit. OK. I think the first challenge was surprisingly enjoyable. It could have been a lot worse. I didn't have any idea of how, what the feedback was going to be like, and I'm actually quite happy with it. BBC Breakfast presenter Louise has made a cheese and bacon burger with guacamole and corn on the cob and a side of chicken wings glazed in maple syrup and soy sauce. Your flavouring on your wings is great, but they need to be cooked a lot more. Right. Your burger, however, is delicious. <gasps> mm. oh. Just delicious. And what I really like about it, there's a nice patty inside which has been well seasoned and crispy. It's really, really good. Your guacamole is good. Your presentation's a bit weird, but otherwise I think it's pretty good indeed for a round like this. Thank you. That's a good burger. That's not a bad invention test. You've got some nice ideas. You've got a good touch. Thank you very much indeed. Well I didn't like my burger. Yay, and it was <laughs> cooked. <laughs> and it was OK. The chicken wings they weren't so pleased with, but I'm absolutely delighted. Last up is Sid. He served chicken wings, pan-fried beef, guacamole, coleslaw, sweet potato filled with bacon and cheese, and a salad. That piece of beef you've cooked, so you've cooked really well. It's browned on the outside, pink in the middle, and it's seasoned. Your chicken wings, I think, are delightful. That sweet potato with the bacon and cheese is highly unusual, but tastes really good to me. I've never made that before. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I like your ideas, I just didn't expect to see 12 of them on one plate. Right. 
Okay. <laughs> if I was sitting in somebody's back garden with a cold beer after a barbie and I got a plate full of food like that, I'd be very, very happy indeed. Because I tell you what, you may not be able to present food very well, Sid, but you can flavour it very well. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> At first, I was a little bit flustered. Nerves can get the better of you. I don't need to do too much. So uh, just take my time next time and think about it. Bit of a wobbly start for some. But actually, some decent food from some also. They're going to a professional kitchen next. That's going to be a wake-up call for them, isn't it? It's day two, and the five celebrities have been split into two groups and are on their way to a busy London restaurant. Well, it's going to be some fancy place, I reckon. Would they seriously risk having us in there, that one? Liz, Sid and Tina will be cooking at Boundary, a classic French restaurant in London's fashionable East End. Service will be run by head chef Harry Faddy. We've got a very busy lunch ahead of us, 40 plus today in the restaurant. Roasted in there, and I'm not even doing anything yet, so... Uh... The temperature's definitely rising. Each of you are going to be cooking one dish for paying customers. Genuinely, I hadn't even noticed that the window's right there and everyone's going to be able to see me. I'll be wetting myself. But I'll give it a go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's crack on. During today's service, Liz will be in charge of a starter. Seared scallops topped with lardo, with asparagus, peas, and a wild garlic puree. This is going to be a very popular dish. It always is. I'm ready. So we only cook the scallop on one side, really. Oh, okay. Give it a good caramelisation. It's going to take nearly a minute to cook these scallops. Okay. Okay. You're going to add some butter. We're going to give it a little baste. Okay. Right. <laughs> The peas and asparagus are first blanched, then added to a butter emulsion, and finished with wild garlic and chives. Presentation is very important with this dish. If it doesn't look good enough, we'll start again. Mine's not going to look bad. <laughs> this is lardo de colonnata, so it's cured pork fat. This we're going to just drape over the hot scallop and then quickly blow torch it. Then just finish with a few pea shoots. Make it look pretty. OK. Can you manage that? I hope so. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the dish looks amazing. I'm very conscious that there's probably going to be high demand for it today. I'm nervous about the pressure of getting it out and just not getting it wrong. Sid's dish is pan-roasted cod, braised fennel, cauliflower puree, monk's beard, and a blood orange butter sauce. You're going to have to be very careful here. You don't want to scorch the cod. Right. Very expensive piece of fish. It's going to take about 30 seconds. Then straight into the oven. Right. So this is where you want to work quickly. The braised fennel and cauliflower puree are gently heated before starting the sauce. Take a knob of butter. We want to take this to burn rosette. Right. Then we add a little drop of vinegar. OK? Off the heat. Then you can go in with the capers. Juice from the blood orange into the pan now. And we can add the monk's beard as well. Fennel on next. Goes onto the plate underneath the fish. Next on is your lovely cod. We're going to dress the plate. It doesn't have to be the same every time, but it wants to kind of fall naturally onto oh, the plate. Okay. OK, that's your dish. Looks very pretty. Think you're up to it? Yeah, I mean, as long as I follow your instructions, I, I, sh 
What should go wrong? I'm sure you'll be fine. It seems simple enough. Hopefully I don't crack under pressure. I can create something just as beautiful as that. Tina's mane is duck breast with celeriac puree, rape greens cooked in anchovy and garlic oil, and a red wine jus. So you just want to gently render down the fat, add the butter and the herbs, baste it, and then we're ready to go in the oven. You make it look so easy. Whilst the duck breast cooks, the celeriac puree is warmed through and sprouting greens from the rapeseed plant are blanched. This takes literally 30 seconds okay. to cook. Wow. It's similar to broccoli, but it doesn't take anywhere near as long to cook. Into your pan, you're going to have a little bit of anchovy, drain off the excess, and then into the water. Very simple presentation, but I'm quite particular about how it goes down on the plate. A good spoonful of the celeriac puree. So we're going to have one piece of the duck like that, and the other piece here, so they can see the nice the cooking of the duck. OK. And then the last thing to do is a little bit of this sauce. And that's it, OK? I think it looks incredible what you've done, but uh, I'll give it a go. It is a very simple dish. It's just all in the execution. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm nervous, I'll be honest. I do hope the order 35 of Sid's dishes and just five of mine. Across town in the West End, Amy and Louise are arriving at modern Italian restaurant Bernardi's. Running the pass is head chef Sabrina Gidda. Hello. Hello, ladies. Louise. Welcome to Bernardi's. Nice, thank you. We've got a very busy lunch today, a lot of covers, so it's going to be a little bit of a push for you. But if you come with me, we can get started on prep and crack on. Yay. Louise will be cooking fillet of sea bream with braised fennel, wild garlic, and a blood orange sauce vierge. You're going to go skin side down, yeah. always away from it. OK. And you've got your hands right in here all the hot oil there. Get used to that <laughs> So what we're going to do is add a little touch of our mandolin fennel to this. So we're going to let that work down a little bit. Lemon juice and wild garlic are added at the last moment. And then we just finish with a little bit of parsley. You want to make sure there's enough lemon in there, enough salt. Oh, it's rummy. Excellent. What you don't want to do yeah. is turn the fish too early, because if you do, then you're going to end up tearing the skin. So now we're ready to plate. Let's go. This is the worst bit. No, this is the easy bit. Is it? This OK. Is so take a little of our softened fennel just onto the plate and then a piece of your fish. Yep. The dish is finished with the blood orange sauce vierge and fennel fronds. And that is our dish. Looks like a painting. It's beautiful. I'm worried that I'm going to muck up the fish. I'm worried that I, you know, ruin the fish. I'm worried that lots of different things worry me about it, to be honest. So, I mean, today you're going to be cooking uh, one of our signature dishes. It's a rabbit capoletti with a little touch of black olive, and it's finished with a very light tomato sauce with a little touch of rabbit stock. It sounds so hard. No, it's not too hard. No, it's, it's going really to be hard. great. It's going to be great. The sauce starts with a brunoise of carrot, celery, and leek. So the sauce is very quick to assemble, but it's really important that you get the flavour right. OK. What we're going to do is add a little touch of rabbit stock. See tomato. OK. You do not want to over-reduce it at this point. The main flavour of the sauce should absolutely be the rabbit. The capoletti are filled with slow-braised rabbit leg, mascarpone, and fresh herbs. Olives are in the sauce. Your pasta is now ready. Pasta goes in. It's really important that you cook out the pasta in the sauce, okay. just so all of the flavor gets in. And then we are going to finish with just a little touch of fresh parsley. We finish with a little touch of cold pressed lemon oil. And then we have a few tarragon leaves just to garnish. And that is a rabbit dish. Oh, my God. OK, it's fine. 
You Come will. Come me, I'll be fine. You're going to be great. Fine. You're I can do great. this. It's midday, and across London, lunch service is about to begin. There's real people. We have real people, real life people here now. First check, one scallops, one tartar, full of monkfish and a duck. The first order is in for Liz's scallop dish. Not sure how that's going to go, but we'll give it a whirl. <gasps> What's the next bit? Oh, no. Let's start again. You want to get the, the puree a little bit looser? Yep. Give it a good stir. Thank you. And go, go for it again. Yeah. So you can see the difference between the two plates. Just take a little bit more time, a little bit more attention to detail. One there. Turn the thing off. <laughs> and then dress it with pea shoots. There's too many. Oh no. That's fine. That looks good. Okay, okay. you want to try and calm down a little bit. Okay. You're doing everything right. Just You're just slow. rushing a bit. Okay. okay. Yep. I'm doing it right. I just need to slow down and stop panicking. I think. Sid, one cod. Yes, chef. Was it just one? Yeah, it was. Listen up. Table 24 is away. Anglais, monkfish, duck, and a lamb. Cod looks great, man. The cod looks banging. One charcuterie, one scallops, one egg, one tartar, follow an anglais, monkfish, duck and a lamb. Duck is really popular. I don't know whether that's a good thing for me or a bad thing. More practice makes perfect. You hate it, sir. Sid, let's go. let's go. With the cod cooked, Sid now has to plate the four elements of the dish to chef's high standards. That's it. Let's have a little bit on top of the fish. Yeah, we'll do. That looks good, yeah? Thank you. A little bit tidier next time, but otherwise very good. Thank you, Chef. Tina, one duck right now, please. Yes, Chef. Tina is next up with her duck main course. So, you remember how we plated it? Yes. No. Oh. Be assertive with it, yeah? I'm messing this up. It's not perfect, but it's fine. We need to move along. Okay. Mm. Can't remember whether it's skin down or skin up. Skin up, so you got that upside down. I thought so. Sorry. Should I take it off and do it again? Yeah. Oh. Skin side up. Yeah. This just goes on the end. Just on the it? end there. We'll get the next one absolutely bang on, okay? Okay. Service, please. Yes, I think it's just my presentation. I'm, I'm enjoying doing it. A little bit frantic at the moment. Everyone's just finding their feet. But the food's good. We just need to work on the presentation and the timings. Over in the West End. It's hitting a bit in my face. Right, OK. Amy and Louise are already swamped with orders. One sea bream, one set chicken, one rat, and straight up, please. Uh, did we get that, Louise? Yes, sir. Louise's challenge is to get a perfect crispy skin on her sea bream. Oh, my gosh. While simultaneously cooking her fennel garnish. Good, I got that too hot, isn't it? Can we get a push on this fish, please? Yeah, one, come in. One sea bream. Gosh, it does so much to do. A tiny touch less oil in the pan. Just be careful yeah. with that. Yeah, too much oil, yeah. And be really careful with that oil. It's kind of really intense. One burrettino, one fish crudo, follow. Two capoletti lard. Two rabbit capoletti now. And we're up on two, yeah? The success of Amy's dish depends on carefully balancing the sauce. Let's it nice, lovely. And the precise cooking of the rabbit-filled pasta. I've got two lot of rabbit to do. You can imagine the nerves that I'm going for at the minute. Let's go. Gosh, you need about 10 hands. Lovely. Excellent. Brilliant. We'll start placing. Tidy plates now, yeah? Perfect. Looks really nice. Got a lot of nice colour on it. 
very pretty. We just have to be a bit tidier when we're placing, otherwise we yes. end up with mucky marks around yes, the player, know, which yeah. is not great. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Service, please. Beginning to understand what tidy plates means. It's really an amazing atmosphere to work in. Kind of really fun, is that right? How long on two rabbit, please? One minute, Abbe. Okay, cool. Right. Let's go. Amazing. So you're going to have a nice little place up for us. Really nice shine on your sauce. Pasta looks great. Let's finish the second bowl as well. You've got to work really quick here, otherwise the food's going to go yep. cold. But we also want to work really clean, yeah? Really nice and tidy. So okay. can I get you another bowl? We'll have a quick three plates up, so they're nice and tidy. Really good job. We've got to work really quickly and work a lot cleaner. Can we get plate clean on these boys, please? Okay, right, my next one. Okay, cool. I'm still a little bit stressed out, a little bit, but I think it was all right. I know what I'm doing, okay, come on, let's all get together and make the best dish ever. A little bit sort of ropey on the plating, but that's just practice, but seasoning has been really bang on, so very impressed, very impressed so far. Back in the East End, Service is in full swing. Check on one charcuterie, one vegan special, one scallops, follow Petivier Anglais lamb. Yes, chef. And orders for Liz's scallop dish are racking up. I want 25 up now. Yes. Then I want to go on seven scallops, yeah? Seven scallops. <laughs> There's not enough room for this many. I'm... Right, let's get the scallops on the plate. To move a little bit quicker now, they're going to start to go cold. Chef, how many uh, cods was it straight away? Need four cod going into a pan. Four cods as soon going as possible, in now. Yeah? Yes, chef. Oh, be careful, be careful. After a confident start, Sid is beginning to make mistakes. So when you take the cod out of the oven, you really need to look after it when you're yeah. flipping it. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You damaged it now, so we need to put another start one again, straight right? away. Yeah. Okay. It fell apart. I mean. It broke up. It's a very sensitive cod. Meanwhile, Tina is still struggling with her presentation. That's it, leave it. Oh. No, let's, let's do it again. Sorry, chef. Let's get it right. Service is drawing to an end. We're out of scallops. And Liz is finishing the last of her many scallop orders. Last one! Pretty much every table's had a scallop today, and these are looking really good. You nailed it. OK. Thank you. They're good to go. Very well done. Is that it? OK, yeah. Whew. Clean down. And I definitely calmed down. I didn't know what speed to work out, but once I figured that out, I think it went all right. Chef wasn't mad at me, so... Good day at the office. OK, this is the last table. One duck and two cod. That's the last check, guys. Yes, Hello. chef. Yes, chef. Let's make it the best. With the final check in, it's Sid and Tina's last chance to impress. We need it in 30 seconds, please. I need a holiday. That's much better. Much better. Let's make these ones the best ones, OK? Tina, that looks better. You still want to have the duck the other way around. Oh, no. A little bit messy, but we got there. Messy? A little bit. Very good first attempt in a proper kitchen. Woo! I've loved it. It's scary, but, like, scary fun scary. I'm not going to lie, it's not easy. But I'd learn, you know, quite a bit today. I'm really relieved that we all made it through and um, I really enjoyed it on reflection. Back in London's West End... Check on, guys. This is the bit where we turn it up a little. ..some VIP guests have arrived. Check on. Three capoletti 
small. Oh no. Follow Sea Bream, yes? Wait. This is for the owners of the restaurants. I'm a little bit like, oh my God. Amy, I'm going to try and hold mine back a bit so that we're on time together. I'm stressing a little bit, not going to lie to you. Good. Are you okay? Careful. Fine. Right, pay. Right, pay. Cool. Okay, I'm ready for the pass, Chef. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Ready, Chef? The plate's really nice and clean. The last few have been amazing. So we want the same again. Both plates up at the same time, that's perfect. Ready for that glass of wine next. Oh uh, or not, let's go. Check on four capoletti small, follow four sea bream, one polenta chips, oh. one frigid jelly. Right, let's go. That's in, cool. Just never stops. <laughs> I'm loving the buzz of it. Oh, I'm loving like the pressure. I feel confident for once in my life. Good news, Amy. Table eight, love the capoletti. Nice work. Woohoo! Hey, top chef today. It's the final check for Amy and Louise, and after a busy service, they've found their stride. Oh, my goodness. If I had four at the start, I think I might have left the kitchen. Can we go on four capoletti small now, please? Coming, chef. Really nice sauce. Really nice sauce. Amazing. <laughs> so good. So good. With Amy's final dishes gone. Four sea bream right now, please. Coming, chef. Mind your backs. It's up to Louise to finish service on a high. Gorgeous fish. Amazing. Really nice. Really nice. So impressive. Oh, really, you. really good. Really good. Perfect. Perfect. Resourced it. <laughs> I'm going to have a bath and lie down. <laughs> really impressed. I'm really lovely to have them in the kitchen. Today was unbelievable. I do feel much more confident today, and I'm so glad that I feel like that. That was an amazing experience. I'm really proud, and I feel much, much more confident about what I, what I can do. This, for me, is a pivotal moment in the story of your competition, because it's the first time we get to see your dishes. If I were you, I'd make sure they were very, very good indeed. The bad news is, at the end of this, one of you is going home. One hour, two courses, ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Today I'm feeling nervous, but I'm feeling determined. I'm rosemary. I'm gonna go in there today, go come and aim. I've got an hour. Right, who's this? is this rosemary or parsley? Right, let me help. Come on, aim. What is this? I've done it five million times. I can do it. I was worried about you with your nerves going yeah. into a restaurant kitchen. I was confident, I was buzzing, and I really, really enjoyed it. What are you making for us? So I'm going to be making a stuffed portobello mushrooms with goat cheese and garlic. And then for main course, I'm going to do a pan-seared ribeye beef with butternut squash and tender stem broccoli. My favourite restaurant in Essex, they do this recipe. Just so you know, I bought some Shiraz with my steak, so we can have a little bit late, like, with the food. Just putting it out there. Good to know. Thank you very much. Good to know. Amy's doing a stuffed mushrooms. Her main course, a rib of beef, 
it might not sound very complicated, but considering Amy's nerves in the first round, if she can deliver these two courses, I'll be really impressed. I am once again feeling really nervous, which is sort of ridiculous because I'm going to be cooking my own two dishes. But the pressure here is quite something. I'm making you breakfast. I eat at least two breakfasts a day. Go on. I wake up at 3.40 in the morning and I have one breakfast then. I normally have a sort of granola with yoghurt, so I'm going to do that for you. And then the second course is a pork schnitzel <sighs> with um, a duck egg on top and a butter and lemon and caper sauce. Looking forward to breakfast? Good. At this time of day? <laughs> Making granola is a good thing. She's going to serve that with some yoghurt and some fresh fruit. Good. Nice. But at the end of the day, there's a bowl of granola. The thing I'm worried about is that it's a little bit simple. 25 minutes have gone, which means you've got 35 minutes left. I've got to sort of pull it out of the bag because uh, otherwise I could leave today. And uh, I've only just got here. I'm 98% confident I can nail these dishes. Sid's doing us two quite different dishes. A Thai beef salad. Sid's main course, classic fish pie. A seed is going to have to push really, really, really hard. He's got to make a sauce, he's got to make mashed potato, he's got to cook the fish. He's got to assemble the pie and he's got to get it in the oven and he's got to get it cooked all within the hour. Sid, you are running around this kitchen like a pro. I know, I need to get everything on so I can relax a little bit, you know? Are you thinking to yourself, oh, no, not now, Baldy? Yeah, exactly. I've got no time for chat, I'm a cook. You want this competition, mate, don't you? I want to do well, yeah. I want to learn. How much would you like me to go away now? I would love you to go away. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> right, where was I? Obviously, today, the timings are going to be tight. But I spent my whole life working to a strict schedule. I've got a timeline, and I'll have to stick to it. Rumour has it that you were a bit of a dynamo in that pro kitchen. The more orders I got, and there were a lot, I actually settled into a rhythm and was a lot calmer with more to do. You enjoyed it, did you? Yeah, really enjoyed it, yeah. What are you making now for us? A chicken fajita stack. I made a salsa with uh, some tequila in it. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> What's your other course? A bonnie canache. So, a what? A bonnie canache. So, I can't really say it. It is essentially yoghurt, cream, fruit, Oats. That's a Kranikan. Yes. I like Mexican food so much. Oh, no. <laughs> I've actually written a it. song about a fajita. Oh, no. OK. Well, it's more of a rap, really. Ah, uh, very good, very good. Do I have to laugh at your jokes? Does that help? If I laugh at your jokes, does it give me more chance of staying in? Yeah. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! This is making for us Kranikan, a classic dessert from Scotland. Layers of cream, oats, whiskey, and raspberries. And what we've got from Liz is tequila. Maybe she's trying to tequila us. Having to do both courses in an hour. Look at me as if I've got all day. That's where I will probably fall down. What are you making today? So I've got the finny addy, which is smoked haddock fillets in a cream sauce with cheesy mashed potato, minted peas, and then banoffee pie. Anything going with the banoffee pie? Well, I add a little bit of a Tina's kick to it. A little bit of a surprise. What is it? It's just a little tiny bit of chilli and chocolate. Interesting. I think Tina seems quite confident. She seems to know what she's doing. It's just whether the banoffee pie will set because you've got to make sure that you actually cut a decent wedge out of it and serve it up so it looks good. You guys have got four minutes left. Here's my steak to be done, sauce on, and I'll be fine. That is time. Breakfast time, I pick up.
Louise's first breakfast course is granola layered with Greek yogurt, raspberries, blueberries, honey, and creme de cassis. I like the toastiness of the oats and the nuts with the maple syrup. Puree of the fruit and the yogurt, they set the whole thing alight. I think it's a good thing. I just like that granola a bit more chunky. I think that's delicious. Toasty nuts, sour yogurt, absolutely delicious. Louise has also made pork schnitzel with fried duck egg, pancetta, chorizo, and a lemon butter sauce with parsley and capers. There's so much fried on there, for me, with the butter as well, it's getting a little bit like a heart attack on a plate. But I like the way you've cooked your schnitzel. The pork inside is really well cooked. Love the rich egg yolk all over it, like the salty bacon. I think you've had a very good round. I think your food looks good and it tastes very good. You can't ask for a lot more at this stage, Louise. Thank you very much indeed. I myself like it. There's a lot of really big flavours on there. The thing I don't like is the fact that you burnt your schnitzel. And the fact was, you had three other nice bits on your bench, which you feasted upon and gave us the burnt bit. They both liked it, most of it, which was great. They said it looked good as well. I'm really, really pleased. Sid's starter is strips of raw beef fillet marinated in vinegar, chilli, lime juice, sesame oil, tarragon and mint. It's nice and spicy with chilli, it's nice and herbaceous with all those herbs, but for me it's just a little bit too much vinegar and a bit too sharp. Okay. I really like that. I mean, the beef is really tender, you hardly have to chew. I mean, you get mint and it's so sharp and then you get heat as well. Really good, mate. Really good. Thanks. For his main, Sid has made fish pie. Smoked haddock, prawns and scallops, topped with mash and served with boiled carrots, leeks and green beans. That is an absolute ripper beauty. You have got it bang on the money fish pie. It's lovely. Creamy mashed potato, bit of salty crust on top. You can taste the salmon, the smoked haddock, the prawns and the scallops. I've got to say, I think that's outstanding. Thank you. That is a very good, luxurious, get elbow deep in it fish pie that I think is glorious. It's obviously nerve-wracking waiting for, you know, to be critiqued, but um, they really enjoyed it and, you know, I started getting goosebumps, so I can't, can't complain. <laughs> Tina has served Finny Addy, a Scottish dish of smoked haddock in a leek sauce with cheesy mash and minted peas. I like your smoked fish with your very well-made smooth mashed potato. I like it. It's a little dry. It needs either more sauce or it needs an egg on it. As well cooked as the fish is, that sauce of yours could be a bit more creamy. It could be a bit more opulent. And that's what it needs, because the fish is great. Nice, thank you. For dessert, Tina has made banoffee pie topped with chilli chocolate. Your toffee, your bananas and your cream and the chocolate across the top is lovely and just get a little tiny hint of the chilli. Your biscuit base is buttery, but it's burnt. Sorry. I really like the flavours on here. I mean, that's just a sticky indulgence. You know, I, I love the sweet banana, the cream, the bit of chocolate on, I can get the salt. However, you've slightly caught it and slightly burnt it. Okay. It's terrifying. I feel like I've just walked up the aisle and taken that big breath that you do. <gasps> And you get to them and they go, it's OK, and you go... Thank you. Amy 
starter is portobello mushrooms stuffed with goat's cheese, served with asparagus, red onion and tomatoes. I do like the combination of cheese, red onion and tomato. Not a huge fan of the cheese and the mushroom, I'm afraid. OK. Not because of the flavours, just because of the textures, because it's very slippery. I think the idea's good. It's tasty. It's just... It doesn't all quite work together. Her main is beef ribeye, served with sautéed broccoli, roasted butternut squash, and garnished with chilli and onions. I would prefer that beef more cooked, the fat at the end of it I can't eat. Butternut squash and sprouting broccoli together, I don't like. But you have given a lot of thought to your presentation and you do look much happier cooking, so you are definitely progressing. I really like your chilli and your onions uh, together with the flavour of the beef. The beef itself, cook it for a little bit longer, let that fat just melt down a little bit. Don't be frightened of heat. Turn it up a little bit. The steak wasn't done. I knew it straight away. I told you it was raw. Yeah. It's annoying, isn't it? Don't worry. I think I started really panicking, but look, I did try my absolute best. Finally, it's Liz. She served a chili fajita stack with tequila salsa and guacamole. Your flavours and textures are decent enough. The chicken's nicely cooked. I love that salsa. But your eye for presentation is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> a tomato salsa with pineapple and tequila. It makes me smile because it's a bit of fun and it tastes pretty good. I'd like that guacamole to be a bit more spicy. Oh, OK. A really good amount of spice in your guaco. For dessert, Liz has made her version of Kranikan, toasted oats and cream and a raspberry compote flavoured with tequila. Is that all tequila or is that raspberry juice? Raspberry juice. I hope. Is it? <laughs> no, it's just tequila. <laughs> Holy crikey. <laughs> if you can't impress them the way it looks and the way that it tastes, get them drunk. Is that if your, get you drunk. If I get you drunk, that'll look better. <laughs> <laughs> Any more of that and I'll probably be singing and dancing. <laughs> I, like, I like the strength of the tequila. I like the fact that you've crushed up some nuts on the top, the sharpness of the raspberries going with that lovely sweet cream. I love it. Your oats need more toasting. Oh, okay. They're soft. And they're too soft. They're, they're like they just come out of a packet. I'm really pleased with how it went in with John and Greg. <laughs> I poisoned them. <laughs> poisoned them without oh, them. But they're still laughing at you... my tequila. <laughs> wow. Sorry, boys. He's slightly tiddled, you two. I don't have an artistic bone in my body, but thankfully that is something that I can go away and practice and, and learn and get better at. Thank you for today. Obviously, it wasn't completely perfect. You realise now we've got to make a decision based on what we've seen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Off you go. Oh, we've got some good cooks in there, mate. Oh, I, th I think we have got some good cooks. Uh, for me, there's two of them who are absolutely safe, and I think three of them we've got question marks over. Louise looks like a good solid contestant. She presented two very attractive, very tasty plates. I think Louise is a really strong contender. I think Sid could be a good cook. That beef dish had extraordinary flavour. I loved it. I thought his fish pie was absolutely delicious. Listen, he's not there yet, but he's got the makings of a very, very good MasterChef contestant. I'm now undecided because I can see slight issues with Tina, Liz and Amy. I'm starting to really get my confidence with cooking. So hopefully that would be amazing if I do get through. I'd love it, you know, I think my family would be really shocked. I feel I've come really far in the short time that I've been here. But if I do go, I won't have any regrets. 
as the Scousers would say, I'd be a bit devoured if I don't get through. But nothing ventured, nothing gained, I'm not a sore loser. They all had faults. However, one of them had a few more faults than the others. Worked hard. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've made a decision. One of you, unfortunately, is leaving us. The person leaving us is Amy. Well done. Oh. I am a little bit gutted, I really am. I'd have loved to stay in the competition. But look, I'm really proud of myself and couldn't have done any more. <laughs> I'm just ecstatic I've got this far. I'm chuffed. <laughs> I'm really relieved. I didn't realise how much I didn't want to go until they didn't call my name. I've had a good day. I'm just really daunted now about what's coming next. I'm feeling good. Yeah, it's a relief. And uh, bring on the next round. Next time, the four celebrities are split into teams. Keep an eye on that. Whoa, see, back it in. I'm up the creek. I almost want to get drunk. Come this way, jump, jump, keep moving! I'll have arms like Arnie by the time I've finished doing this. Ooh. You better move really, 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 really fast. <sighs> Before cooking their best two courses to stay in the competition. Gosh, this is a disaster. What is it? I've no idea. Hello.